What's the deal, YouTube? It's your girl, Ms. Honey. Welcome back to my channel. You guys already know what this is. This is the season two premiere of Queen Sugar. I am reviewing Queen Sugar. You guys already know I am a, I suck from the teat of Oprah, even though she didn't pick up Underground, as I had requested. I am still in prayer with the Lord about underground. I am not going to give up on underground. And I am super, super excited about seeing the border loans. It is just as beautiful and just as wonderful as I remember it from last season. And seeing this opening scene with Nova just, I mean, uh, it just lifted my heart. I just feel like this is going to be an excellent, excellent season. I already see that coming. So you guys, if you are not subscribed to my channel, I'm going to review the hell out of Queen Sugar season two. So you want to go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. I promise you will not regret it. Give me a thumbs up and let YouTube know what it is you like, what it is you want to see, the YouTubers whose content you really appreciate. Hit that thumbs up and let, let, let them know. Let them know. Let me know. Okay. As well as leave a comment down below. If you guys have followed me for any of my reviews, you already know that we get hot and heavy down below in the comments. We talk about who our favorite characters are, our favorite scenes. We get pissed off. We get happy together. It all happens down below. So don't forget to comment as well. Now, without further ado, let's get into season two, episode one of Queen Sugar, After the Winter, all right? And I am popping off in full melanated fashion because this is on, this is scripted melanated TV, and it calls for full melavision, okay? The naps, the kinks, the curls, popping, 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 melanin, popping, all right? Let's do it. All right, the episode opens with Nova, and she is um, appears to be doing laundry, but we soon find out that she um, has created these beautiful fabrics, um, and they are gifts for someone. We'll talk about who that is later, and she begins to take the beautiful fabric off. It's kind of like tie-dye type thing. Um, that she, this fabric that she's created, this beautiful pattern fabric, and she's wrapping it in, you know, gift paper. And out comes a white guy from her house. It is not our favorite white guy, the police officer that we saw her with at the last episode of season one. I don't know what's going on. I am not sure. But apparently, he had a great time the night before. He really enjoyed himself, and he wants to do it again. And she is short. She is sweet. She is abrupt. She don't even really look at him good. You know, he's like, hey, I had a good time last night. And she's like, yep. <laughs> he's like, maybe we can do it again sometime. And she's like, yeah, maybe. Have a good day now. Okay? Take care. Ta-ta. Bye-bye. All right. So obviously this is not someone that she's seriously invested in, obviously. Then we see Charlie and Remy. Charlie and Remy are in this business meeting and they are, you know, solidifying some investors. Uh, it is a whole group of men. They seem extremely, you know, interested. They love the pitch. You guys know Charlie is a businesswoman. She is smart. She is savvy. She is degreed. And now she's got Remy. Well, Remy's a softer side. He is the brains. Um, it is his particular strain of sugarcane that did beautifully last um, season. And so he is the science behind the business. And they both together sell, you know, the idea of the queen sugar mill. It's beautiful, right? Excellent. And all the men love it. They All the businessmen love it. They say, let's get going. Let me know when Davis is, you know, signs the papers. You know, we just need to get Davis's signature. And she's like, oh, wait a minute. Um, you guys, this is my adventure. It's, Davis has nothing to do with this. And they were like, well, I thought you understood that Davis needed to be a part of this in order for us to be 
on board with it, we need to have Davis as a part of it as well. Of course, Remy is just like, here we go with this bull crap again, all right? So she was like, you know what, that's fine, let's just make it happen. So they all shake hands and leave, and then she, you know, takes a deep breath and turns around, she faces Remy, because she's already know what he's thinking. She already know, what the fuck? Why are we doing, why are we still doing this with you and Davis? What's going on with this? When me and you going to be together? What's I'm sick of this. Anyway, he doesn't say all that, but she says, hey, you want to go get a drink? Let's celebrate. And he was like, mm, celebrate? And she says, he says, your divorce isn't even final. What do you mean celebrate? She says, well, the divorce will be final soon. And, you know, he says, you know what? Your divorce isn't final, so you are still going to be out celebrating having a drink with a man that is not your husband. Why don't we do this? Why don't we just pump our brakes and slow down? All right? You get everything finalized and done. Until then, I, I just I just want everything to just, you know, slow down a little bit. You know, he's trying to protect his heart as well he should. Of course, that hurts Charlie's feelings, but you know what I'm saying? I don't know what to tell you, Charlie. I don't know what to tell you. What, what are we doing here? What are we doing? I like Remy and Charlie. I don't want Char Charlie to mess this up for us. Okay, Remy's a good man. Don't mess this up for us, Charlie. All right. So, um, then we see Aunt Vi. Aunt Vi is running the hell <laughs> out of the high yellow restaurant. Prosper is there. He is paying his bill. He is saying that. Everything is doing great there. The food is not as good as her cooking. Y'all know, I, I, I knows how to burn in her own personal kitchen. And she says, well, we're getting there. And he says, tell the men you got back in the kitchen. She says, ain't no men back in the kitchen. These are women from the halfway house. She's giving them a second chance. And she tells him that's something she learned from Ralph Angel is about giving people a second chance. The women back in the kitchen are doing good. They're picking it up soon enough and they are going to be spot on and i believe it because um ain't vi got what it takes to run this business this could be her restaurant okay then we see ralph angel blue and darla and they are riding in the tractor and i tell you what i love blue i love blue he's pulling the tractor, daddy faster daddy faster so he's like, I'm going as fast as I can, son. I tell you what, Ralph Angel is some kind of fine. That coffee syrup, oh. Come through, coffee. <laughs> anyway, um, so he, you know, he stops the tractor and Blue and Darla get out and he squats down. I love Ralph Angel and Blue's relationship. And I'm telling you guys in this moment, not gonna get emotional. I'm not. I'm not gonna cry. I'm not gonna do it. Um, the way he's talking, the way he looks, um, the way he speaks so kindly and so um just affectionately and with such pride to blue, it reminds me so much of his dad. You know, he sounds like his daddy, looks like his daddy. Skin is like his dad. I know they're actors, but he seems so much like Papa Bordelon. You know, he's coming into his own. And a lot of it is just like his daddy and probably his daddy's daddy and his daddy's daddy. You know, this is a legacy uh, uh, that has been passed down. And he tells Blue, all of, see all this land? I call this Blue's Corner. This your land. No matter what, this will always be your land. You will always be able to come back here and you will always have a place here. And Blue was like, really, Daddy? And he was like, yeah, go on out there now. Go on out there. Blue takes off across his field, you know, and he and Darla are talking and Darla wants to know if Ralph Angel has had an opportunity to talk to his family yet um, about what he found. And he tells uh, her, not yet. And she says, why not? He says, um, they'll take it from me. She said, well, you don't know that. He said, well, can we talk about this later? And he says, I'm glad you're here. So obviously they are doing very, very well as a couple. Now you guys already know how I felt about Darla uh, last season. I 
you know, I have my reservations about her. But seeing this first episode, I'm going to go ahead and give her a chance, okay? And so far, she doesn't disappoint. All right. So then we move forward. We see Micah and Kiki. And Kiki is driving a sports car. And Micah is the passenger. And they pass the tractor and go on down the road and end up in the restaurant where they are having lunch with Charlie. It turns out it's Micah's birthday. And that sports car is a gift from Davis to Micah. Now, Micah, you know, he still has these feelings about his dad. He still has these hard feelings about his dad because his dad shit on his mom and his dad is a real jerk and a butthole. And Micah is not feeling him. And he feels like, you know, yeah, I should be happy about the car, but it's just dad trying to buy me. And um, Charlie tells him, don't let this ruin your special day. It's your birthday. He thanks them both for sharing his birthday with him. And it's a very, very nice moment. Then we see um, Aunt Vi. And Aunt Vi is looking up Hollywood on the internet. Y'all know how y'all check out y'all exes and see what they doing, see what they up to, see if they at their same address, see if they got that same number. You know how you do. You just do a little light investigation. Okay, just a little light investigation and she sees his picture and I see his picture and I get all those same old feelings about Hollywood again because y'all know Hollywood is a good black man. All right, y'all don't know I have lustful feelings for Ralph Angel. But I'd marry Hollywood tomorrow. Okay, if Hollywood showed up at my door, knock, 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 I would answer. Okay, come um, yeah. on in. So she calls him, he doesn't answer. You know, I feel for Aunt Vi because she went too far with Hollywood and now she sort of has to wait for him to come around. But we know Hollywood, Hollywood's going to come around because he's no fly by night man. All right. We already know from him taking care of his, his mentally ill wife to how much he loved on the borderline family and helped them through their tragedy and, and everything from season one, that Hollywood's a good man and he's going to come around. Oh, but I'm is still very, very hurt. Um, then we see Nova call Aunt Vi. And she wants to take Charlie out for Micah's birthday. And I was like, take Charlie out for Micah's birthday. Uh-huh. You just on a man hunt. And she was like, whatever. I want to go out. I want to party. So, of course, Aunt Vi is game. Now, she's calling her, calling Aunt Vi from the baby shower. She's at a girlfriend's baby shower. And that's who the, the gifts of fabric, printed fabric are for is for her girlfriend. And... Apparently, her girlfriend's having two babies, and she says, oh, this is so beautiful. She doesn't open it, but she says, wait until they're born to open it. This is what Nova tells her. Wait till they're born to open it, and you'll know at that time which is for which. Because she said, "Um, can I open this now? And she was like, no. Well, you guys already know that um, Nova grows some of the best, has some of the best marijuana. In, in Louisiana, so she was asking <laughs> about, oh, you know, is this something I can open here? But also, we know that Nova took on, has taken on some of the same gifts and talents that her mom had, which is this ability to know things, to connect, to um, have insight about things. So this information about waiting to open it is just information to let this young lady know that this is something special for your babies to bless your babies um and so wait until this time and then open it so the, the all of their friends are there and they sit down and they start talking and they're basically talking about you know all of these you know traditions and ideals that people have about women being married before they have a baby or raising a baby alone or never getting married and not having children um, or only dating black men or, you know, and, and, you know, 
when Nova starts to talk and commiserate with her friends, it sort of comes out how she's feeling. She's feeling like, I, I don't want to be trapped. I don't want to be caught in. I don't want to be... We already know that Nova has been building walls up around her heart for one reason or another for a very, very long time. And this apparently is just a continuation of it when Aunt Vi makes a reference about her being on the manhunt. Also, we see this gentleman come out and she barely acknowledges him. He is obviously a discard lay. Um, this is Nova's way of having control over her own life, over her own body, over her own choices. We already know Nova is a, you know, a child of the earth. She belongs to everyone and everything. You can't cage her in unless you are a very, very special kind of man. And until that very, very special kind of man comes along and she's willing to receive it, she's always going to be kind of half cocked and uninvested or seemingly so so it's a good conversation then we see ralph angel and prosper and they are checking out the tractor the tractor is something going on with the tractor and prosper tells him i'm, I'm afraid it's broken it's gonna cost a lot of money to get a new one it's gonna cost a certain amount of money to get it fixed and ralph angel said yeah i know that but what if i work on it myself and, you know, fix it a little bit and bring it to a point where it, you know, I can bring the cost down. And uh, Prosper said, hey, man, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. That's a good idea, man. I'm proud of you. And your daddy will be proud of you, too. You're doing real good. And Ralph Angel said, thank you, man. I appreciate that. It's just another reason to love Ralph Angel. So then we see Nova, Aunt Vi, and Charlie. And they had the club. Aunt Vi is tipsy everybody in the club getting tipsy <laughs> and charlie's having a good time and laughing of course nova's having a good time they get out on the dance floor and nova's a beautiful chocolate skinned woman and she is dancing a man walk up behind her and grab her around her you know her, her upper shoulder area and she's dancing in his arms and she moves his hands on down to her hip baby and turns around and puts her hand around his neck she is about to get her next victim <laughs> i hope you ain't looking for love sir because nova ain't got none for you all right on um, Vi is dancing and vibe. Y'all already know she missed Hollywood. So she's trying to kind of drink her sorrows away. And she even tells the girl, I keep calling him and calling him and he don't even answer. And they're just having a good time. And all of a sudden, across the room, who does Charlie see? The, from the back, the back of his head. She's been married to the man. She gave birth to his son. She know Davis when she see him. So she goes over there. And walks around and sees him. And he's sitting over there with a Becky. Hmm. She said, what do you think you're doing? He said, what is it, Charlie? First of all, you already know we're trying to keep a low profile. You know that we want to give people the impression that we're still together for business reasons. You just joined this Louisiana team. Um, we were both a part of that. And, and and also, it's your son's birthday. What are you doing here with this? She kept calling the woman this, this, which, you know, it's a little mean, but I get it. This, you said, instead of you being with your son, you're here with this. And what are you doing with this? And, you know, he tells her, Michael blew me off so he can be with his girlfriend just in case you didn't know and this isn't a big deal because these people here know me you see nobody's out with cameras or cell phones first of all people are always watching davis make no mistake okay the church is always watching <laughs> that's old pentecostal saying the church is always watching davis okay so she's like you know what i i i, I shouldn't Aunt, next thing you know, Aunt Vi comes over. Aunt Vi is has left tipsy and she is she is knocking on the door of drunk and she starts to go off. What do you think you're doing? You ought to be ashamed of yourself. And you hear with this floozy and the woman jumps up and Vi <laughs> and Nova's like, ah, 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 ah. go ahead and have a seat, baby. Go ahead and have a seat. This ain't what you want. 
Security comes over, tries to take it out. It's this big scene. Nova takes Aunt Vi out, and they put, you know, get security to hand, back it up off of us. We leaving. And um, Charlie says to Davis, you know, she says to him, how do you live with yourself? And he just, of course, he looks ashamed. But Davis really has not been able to catch a break ever since he did what he did. And apparently, uh, he's still not getting the forgiveness that he thinks he deserves. I do think Davis feels guilty. I do think Davis feels bad, but this is his lot in life. His lot in life, just like Charlie, you know, your lot in life is never to have a good man like Remy as long as you're holding on to Davis. That's your lot. You're just not going to be able to get Remy like you want him. Same thing with Davis. You're never going to be able to get what you had back because you fractured it so terribly. All you can do is hope and pray that you guys can move to a place where you can at least be cordial. It won't be this episode, but it's something to work towards, Davis. All right. So, uh, moving on, let's talk about um, back at home. Back at home, I'm by sleeping it off, and Nova and Charlie are talking. And, you know, Charlie is obviously in a state. And Nova says, talk to me. Tell me everything. You know, Charlie's like, like a book report. And she's like, yeah, like I'm in school. Tell me. And so she talks about how her and Davis were so in love and so simpatico when they first got together. And it was wonderful. It was beautiful. And she never thought it would end. And even look at Aunt Vi and Hollywood. She thought they would be together forever. And now they're all broken up. And so it's just this conversation about, you know, the end of what we perceive to be fairy tales. These fairy tales that we have we have put so much into and invested so much into coming into this brutal reality that things end, they get fractured, they get broken. Um and it's just a conversation that, uh, for me personally, I've had with myself a number of times, especially when I see a lot of celebrities that I thought were really, really great together, Brad and Angelina, to see such a horrible divorce. I get it. I understand. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, it's the, the fracturing of this perceived fairy tale. So great conversation about it. So you guys know it's Freedom Day and... So the family's going to have a big dinner, but first we see Darla at a Narcotics Anonymous meeting, and she's telling a story about as a child, she had this favorite um, tutu, and it, it was her favorite, and one day she wastes cranberry juice, and no matter what her mom did, she couldn't get the stain out of the, out of the tutu, and she references it, you know, um, because of the dinner. And she says, I'm just so afraid that, you know, here it's two years later. She's been having such a wonderful time. This is how we know that it's two years after her um, sobriety. And it's two years later in, in the borderline, the life of the borderlines, because um, she tells them here some two years later, she's afraid to go to this dinner because she's afraid they'll still see her stains. And she's you know, she, she's nervous about it. And so, of course, they all encourage her. We see back at the family dinner, Ralph Angel comes up with Blue. They're waiting for Dollar to come, and they're still waiting for Micah to come. And they are having a good time. Of course, Anvi has made a huge spread. Everybody is super, super happy. And Blue comes in, and he's like, Anvi, 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 I'm so glad to see you. She's like, hey, he's like, did you make pie? She was like, of course I did. I made your baby. Blueberry! She was like, yeah, go and get you a slice. <laughs> he takes off running. And Ralph ain't just like before dinner on by. She said, it's freedom day, baby. Let these boys have their freedom. Because, you know, Charlie is waiting on Micah and she wants him to get over there real quick, like, right? So, you know, um, Nova gives Ralph Angel a hug. They're, 
I love their their connection. Ralph Angel and Nova have a very special connection. Remember, Charlie lived in Los Angeles for a while. So and they they share a mom, Nova and Ralph Angel, but Charlie does, has a different mom. So she's kind of although she's close to Nova and she's close to Aunt Vi, she's her relationship with Ralph Angel is kind of strained and um she doesn't have the closeness with Ralph Angel that Nova has because she was never really, you know, fully present there with with Ralph Angel. So when he, you know, Nova asked him what's going on at the farm, you know, how's it going? He's like, good, good, good. Everything's great. Planted soybeans and um and and Charlie's like, soybeans? And he's like, yeah, soybeans, we have to make some money. You know what I'm saying? We we, we got to do something with that extra land. And I'm planting soybeans and bring the extra money. And Nova's like, good. That's a smart idea. Okay, so. And and Charlie's like, sugarcane is where it's at. Okay, you want to make soy, soybeans extra money? I get it. But it, it we need to at least discuss it. it. You need to at least discuss it with us. Typical, typical Charlie, right? Um, so then he tells him about the tractor. And so Charlie was like, well, we'll just get a new tractor. And he said, it'll be about $15,000. And she's, and Nova says, well, can we get it fixed? He said, yeah, it would be about $6,000 to get it fixed. So she was like, man, he said, but I made a deal with the guy. I saved some money, only paid five or four or $5,000 um, to get it repaired because I did some of the work myself. And Nova's like, my man, boom, smart, great idea. Aunt Vi's like, awesome, great, you're wonderful. You really be thinking. Proud of you, Ralph Angel. And of course, Charlie is the only one. She is the wet blanket, okay, when it comes to Ralph Angel. She just does not give him any slack. She she doesn't trust him. Um, not in a malicious way. She just doesn't believe that Ralph Angel is capable. She refuses to treat him like he is capable. And so she chastises him about... Um, you just patching it up and it's going to break again. It's, you know, a thousand years old. You should have got rid of it and better to spend money now instead of, he just gets up, you know, well, Darla comes in. So when Darla comes in, she brings a dish and Blue's like, mom. And so the conversation about the tractor ends abruptly. But of course, Nova and, and Aunt Vi, Nova and Aunt Vi right at right Charlie. Charlie like, Really, right now, today, this is what you're going to do? And walks Darla, Mom! <laughs> She's got a little dish. Aunt Vi welcomes her in, hugs her up. But she also eyeballs everybody else and lets them know, we're not doing it today. Welcome Darla in. She says, sorry I'm late. I had to go to an NA meeting. Well, Ralph Angel um, wants to see her outside. So it goes outside and he just tells her, I mean, do, are you still going to NA meetings? I mean, what are we doing? He said, Charlie doesn't respect me um, when I talk about jail. So I just try not to bring it up. And this is his way of letting her know that if you want to be accepted in this family, stop mentioning NA. You seem like you're fine to me. You know, don't bring it up and remind people that you had a drug problem. And she's like, the reason I go to NA is so that I don't fall back into those same patterns and start using again. And he's like, well, I'm just saying, you seem fine to me. And she was like, look, I need to go to these meetings. This is who I am. I'll always be an addict. I'll always have to stay on top of it. <clears throat> and so he concedes. They all go back inside for dinner. And um, Aunt Vi begins to pray. Now, before we go to our prayer, let's talk about Micah. Micah is driving along, and he gets pulled over by the police. Now, I think like a lot of African Americans, I have a little bit of... Um, what do you call it? PTSD about everything that's happening in this country right now as far as the police and black men. So this moment 
I, me personally, I feel a, I get nervous and I begin to feel my anxiety rise when the police pull him over. And this show is so very well written and the actors um, in this um, show are excellent actors. If you guys have never seen a character analysis of the actors in this <clears throat> in this show, check out my season one character analysis. I um, mean, they're just super, super talented. And in this moment, uh, Micah, the, the gentleman who plays Micah, does a beautiful job. And so the guy pulls him over and he's got both hands on the wheel and the music is playing and his phone is ringing and the police officer comes over the speaker and says, turn your engine off. And so Michael turns the engine off. He's got both hands on the wheel and, and my heart is beating a mile a minute. It appears that Michael's heart is beating a mile a minute. He doesn't know what to do. This is his first car, and it's probably his first time ever being pulled over by the police. He sees the police come up to the back part of the car, and the guy is touching the vehicle like, you know, like, like, this is a real nice car for, for, for a nigga to be driving. I'm just going to put it out there. I'm just, I'm just saying it like this because this is the moment. And this is what it feels like. This is what it seems like. And I feel like I can be honest with y'all. All right. So this is why we're talking so brutally and graphically. Because this is a moment. So um, you just see the fear on Micah's face. And so the guy wants him to roll the window down. And he tells him. I can't roll the window down because the car, I have to turn the car on in order to roll the window down. And I, I mean, it's completely legitimate, right? The guy screams, roll the window down now. And you guys, I promise you, I am on edge. I, I mean, my anxiety is so high because we're just now coming off this whole not guilty verdict in the um, Philando <clears throat> Castile case and um, it's just every time I see stuff like this I feel like I'm reliving that tape over again and <clears throat> that video I mean I, I, I honestly I feel like I have PTSD I really do I just I'm a nervous wreck I have a father <clears throat> and two brothers and a nephew and I think about all the time, you know, you know, just a, one false move, you know. So anyway, guy yells, I said, roll that window down. And so he, uh, Michael turns the car on, rolls the window down, and the guy wants his wallet. And his license. He goes to reach in his pocket for the wallet. And I'm like, oh my God, don't reach in your pocket without telling them that you're, you got to go in your pocket for your wallet. You, you got to tell them, you know, you got to say it for the video. You got to say it for the camera. You know what I mean? I, I mean, I just, I'm, I, I'm sorry, you guys. Anyway. <clears throat> doesn't have the wallet. I must have left it at home. I mean, he's a 16-year-old boy from, from California. He's in Louisiana. Like, this could go really, really wrong, really, really fast. And I don't know. It was just, it was just a real hard moment for me. <sighs> anyway, so <clears throat> he says, you know, I must have left my wallet at the other house in, in New Orleans, not the one in California. And the guy's like, let me see your registration. And, he, you know, Micah's just like, and he goes for the, for the glove box. And the guy just draws the gun. You know, he's just like, put your hands up. And I'm like, dude, you can't just go for your, for your, you can't just reach for your glove 
box. You know what I'm saying? You, 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 as a black male, you don't have the privilege to just reach for shit. Even if it's the shit they're asking you for. Like, you can't reach for stuff. You have to say, can I? May I? I don't know. I mean, I was just freaking out a little bit because I just thought this was going to be a real bad episode. Real bad scene. I swear, you guys, I have PTSD. <sighs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I really... <clears throat> I didn't cry during the scene when I saw the scene, but just like living it back in my anxiety, just... It's scary out there. It's scary out there for black men. You can't do what's wrong and you can't do what's right. You can't... So... <clears throat> Scene goes off when the police draws the gun. And uh, we go back to the house where they're all having dinner and they're all laughing and talking and talking about Michael being late. And they all hold their hands and praying, saying grace. And uh, Vi does a beautiful, beautiful prayer where she talks about Papa Board alone and how much he missed. They missed him and, and they know that he's looking down on them and he's proud of them and so on and so forth. And as soon as they get done praying, now Micah's phone rang in the car, which was Davis. And now the phone is ringing at the table for Charlie and it's Davis. And as soon as they finish praying, Blue says, I miss Papa. You know, we, we all know that Papa and Blue were very, very close. So we all know that Blue and Papa were very, very close. And um, <clears throat> phone rings again. Of course, it's Davis. Charlie steps away, answers the phone, and she's he's like, hey, I'm looking for Micah. She's like, well, call his phone. It's his birthday. He says, I've been trying to call him. He won't answer. She says, well, he's probably with Kiki. <clears throat> and she says, I'll call Kiki. He said, well, I'm just worried because he left my house hours ago. He's not with you. She hangs up on him, you know, and he's just like, <laughs> you know, she's, she's, she is not hearing it from Davis. Good, bad, or indifferent, she's not giving an inch, okay, with Davis. And she calls Kiki, finds out that he's not with Kiki, and so now she's worried. So there's only a few roads to where they live. They're trying to formulate a plan. I'm by calls Hollywood, and you know she's just like pick up, pick up, pick up, pick up, pick up, pick up, and he answers. Now I failed to mention to you guys when he was talking to Prosper, he got a call from Hollywood, and Hollywood was calling him because he got that call from Aunt Vi, but he missed it. Right? He saw what she called, and so Hollywood had called, and he was just like. Hey, how you doing? And and, and uh, Ralph Angel was like, I'm doing good, 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 man. Everything's working out great. He said, good, you deserve it. If anybody deserves it, it's you. He said, how was Nova and Charlie? He was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you asking about Nova and Charlie, but I know you want to ask about Aunt Vi. He said, yeah, she called me. I want to know if everything is okay. And Ralph Angel was like, I'm not getting caught up in that again. You want to know about Aunt Vi? You need to call me. And he was like, man, I just don't know. Okay, so now that she's calling him again, and she's saying, pick up, pick up, pick up, pick up, it just rings and rings and rings. And I promise y'all, I was sitting here saying, pick up, Hollywood, pick up, pick up, pick up, pick up. So he picks up, and there's like this little, because, you know, he works like on an oil rig. And he picks up, and she's just like, oh. And he said, that. And she said, Hollywood, Ugh. I just love Hollywood, y'all. I'm so happy for her. And he says, what's wrong, bye? She said, we can't find Micah. And he, <clears throat> I'm so worried. I'm nervous. You know, so he knows immediately what she's saying. He knows immediately what her worry is. We all know as black people what her worry is and what, the family's where he is, and he goes immediately into doing what he does best, which is encouraging her. That boy's fine. He had he got that new car. 
He got there with his friends. He hanging out. He young. He's 16. He's fine. He is just fine. Don't worry about it. And she just takes a deep breath. This is why we love Hollywood. This is why we adore Hollywood. This is why we're going to marry Hollywood and love him forever and ever and ever. Okay? So she's like, thank you so much. And he's, she said, I miss you. I miss you so much. I'm so sorry about how I did everything and how I handled it. He said, I miss you too. And I was like, oh, he misses us too. Oh, there's hope for us. Bye, there's hope. So, <clears throat> really, 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 you know, good moment. All right. So, um, we get back to the family and Nova gets a phone call. You know, she knows a lot of people down at the jailhouse because, you know, Nova's an activist too. And so, she gets a phone call and, <clears throat> um... You know, the whole family is in panic. You know, they rush into the jailhouse. Micah's in the jail already. He asks, can he have a phone call? You know, he's got a super worried look on his face. And he's caught between panicking and crying and crying and panicking and breaking down and crying. He wants to get make this phone call. And they say, sure, you can have a phone call after the 400 people in front of you get their phone call. And... You know, Micah's just like, oh my God, my family doesn't know where I am. I don't have my stuff. Like, he doesn't know what to do. He is just now 16. He's from an affluent family. And he's really learning in this moment what it is to be an African-American male in this country. Money or no money. They put him into a jail cell. A 16-year-old boy with grown men. Like, I don't know. They're all people of color, black males, and, and of course they look rough. We don't know how long they've been in jail. That is the end of what we see in jail, but something happened to Micah in jail, and we don't know what. But in rushes um, Charlie, and she wants to know where his son is. He's not in the system yet. You guys already know how it works. And Nova's like, well, everybody just calm down. Now, Nova's from Louisiana, okay, and she gets it. She she has to keep Charlie calm because this is a white male she's talking to, and this could go horribly wrong. Like, they could all end up locked up in jail. They could all end up dead. You know what I'm saying? Like, there is this tension that it's palpable coming from these people of color dealing with these police officers about their family member. Uh, Charlie is acting as a mom. She is in full panic mode. She does not care. She is mama bear. But Nova realizes we have to be calm. No matter how upset we are, we, 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 we have to be calm. No matter what goes on here, no matter how brutal, no matter how horrible, we have to conduct ourselves in a certain manner or it's going to be bad for everybody. Like she knows. Davis knows. When he gets there, <clears throat> he immediately, you know, tr just, you know, lets Charlie know he needs to handle it. And, of course, he uses his star power and, you know, machismo and all of that and talks the guy into going to check and holding and takes a selfie and all of that. And, and, and although Charlie is looking on like, are you fucking kidding me? Um, it's necessary. Like he's, he's got to do this. He's got to go along to get along in order to get his son, because if he pushes against them, they can act like they don't even have his son. <laughs> they can keep his son in there for, for two years, never try him, never bring him before a judge, forget about him. We see, we've seen it happen, all right? So they finally get Micah and everybody hugs him and loves him up and all of that. They, you know, go outside, get him out of there, go outside and he's wet himself. And Nova, her and Micah have a special relationship. She takes off her sweater um, and covers him so that no one would see. And she covers him mentally and she tells him, I, no matter what happened in there, 
it's okay. You all right. You're going to be okay. I promise you. And she hugs him. You know, and he's just so fractured and so broken. I don't know what has happened in this jail, but you can just feel this moment is bad. In the background, we hear Charlie and Davis, and she is letting him have it. You in there acting like you Papa Rossi, you a star. And he said, I did what I had to do to get my son. And she's just like, this is this is what I'm talking about. Blah, 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 blah. Like, it's no fucking time to be arguing. Like, y'all need to be getting with your son. Like, he has been traumatized. He is now, he has now been affected in a very, very deep way by the sickness of this world. As it pertains to his color, like this is no time for y'all to be arguing. And and Davis has just had it. He has had it with this this punishment tour that Charlie is on. And he is like, listen, I am sorry. I did what I had to do to get my son out. And Davis has a moment with Michael where he tells him, we're going to get through this no matter what happened in there. We're going to get through this together. And they hug, and that's the moment that they need because he needs his dad. Good, bad, or indifference. All of our parents are flawed, and <clears throat> family is all we have, and we have to stick together. So I hope that they can come together. And then we see Darla and Ralph Angel, and they are outside the house at Aunt Vi's. And he said, Let me get blue, and I'll meet you back at the house. And she said, Well, wait a minute, you know. I, 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 I don't think I'm coming to the house. And he's like, why are you breaking up with me? And she's like, no, I just want to slow things down. I really feel like you and I need to do well on our own before we can move together forward. I like that. I think that's smart. I think what she wants to do is be whole and be complete and, and, and confident in who she is. It's kind of like what she was talking about in her NA meeting. I feel like I'm stained. I feel like everyone can see my stain. And that that that's a part of your recovery is realizing I did fall down, but I'm getting up and building that confidence in yourself to move forward. So I respect Darla for that. I do. I really respect her for that. And Ralph Angel tells her because he is, he is all things lovely. He says, that's fine. As long as you're not breaking up with me. And she said, no. So, um, you know, she says, so, you know, he concedes, all right? <clears throat> then there's this song that comes on, Prayer, and I think it's John Legend, which is sort of apropos, since Oprah didn't want to pick up Underground, but I digress. Um, so there's this beautiful song, Prayer, that's praying in the background, and we see Prosper ring the church bell, you know, dong. And then we see Ralph Angel in Blue and Ralph Angel's just waking up. It's the next morning. And Blue's jumping in bed. He's like, Papa, Papa's dead. And where's mommy? When's mommy coming back over? He says, soon. You know, then we see Nova. Um, she's waking up with another different white man in her bed. So Nova's on the Make Nova Feel Better tour. <laughs> She said, I just I just want to feel good right now, Daddy. I just want to feel good right now. You know what I'm saying? I just want to feel good. All right. We see Michael. He's in the bed. He's in a real dark place. And Charlie comes in. We never see her. We just hear her voice. Hi, checking in on you. You want to talk? He says, no. She says, okay. He's wounded, you guys. I don't know what has happened. And I'm so scared to find out. But okay. So, lastly, we see Charlie, and she's sitting there with the contracts that the businessmen have put forward for her and Davis to sign. Her name is there, Charlie Borderlone West, on a line for her to sign, and there's a, uh, uh, Davis's name, Davis West, and a uh, line for him to she sign. She signs her name. She looks around. She looks back. She has a thought, and she signs Davis's name. Charlie don't want to ask Davis for a Mickey freaky thing. She don't want to go through Davis. This is bad. Because this put Charlie in a place of compromise. All right? This is a place of compromise. When you put your ethics and your morals on the back burner, you immediately open yourself up to a place of compromise. So this is, of course, going to come back and bite Charlie in the butt. 
And that is it, you guys. <laughs> oh my gosh. <sighs> you guys know I cried the first episode of season one. Probably just as bad when Pomper Bordelow died, but as I did this episode, I really thought I was going to make it through this review without crying, but that's just who I am, you guys, you know, that's just who I am, that's what makes me so beautiful, <laughs> so anyway, you guys, tell me what you think about this episode, y'all, think Doll is still on the up and up, what's going on, we see some scenes from the upcoming season, so it's going to be a lot of treachery, a lot of debauchery. I don't know. I'm afraid. I'm nervous. I don't know who to trust. I don't know who we're going to lose. I just don't know. Oh, tell me what you guys thought of this episode. What do you think about Charlie continuing to punish David some two years later? They still married some two years later. What do you think about Aunt Vi and Hollywood? What's going on with Dollar? Can we trust Dollar? Please, Lord, let us be able to trust Dollar. When is Ralph Angel going to say something about this wheel that he found? Okay, you guys, don't forget to subscribe to my channel down below. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. It's important, you guys. And don't forget to comment, okay? Until next time, honeybees. Mwah! I'll holla.